big things are happening in the winter finale of Shadowhunters, so let's break them down right here on What Happened. Sup everyone, Lisa back again with a recap of the winter finale of Shadowhunters titled By the Light of Dawn. As expected from a finale, we have a lot of major truth bombs dropped as well as a major cliffhanger, so let's dive right in. For this recap, instead of breaking it down in character sections, I'm just gonna go through it how the episode actually played out. So we open with the Institute on alert and Alder Tree and Alec rounding up the troops. The elevator opens and out comes sweet little Madsy, right? You think everything's okay? Think again, because there's a dead body in the elevator with her. So it definitely seems like she is on a mission. Alec runs up to her to try to stop her when she throws him out of the way with her magic and into the elevator where she shuts him in. She then ends up taking off her scarf and out comes from her gills this like poisonous gas or, or something like that. And once she's done, we see Valentine enter the Institute. Thankfully, it looks like little Madsy remembered Alec being nice to her at the house, so she spared his life. Good karma, guys. Good life lesson. Back at that abandoned theme park where we left Clary, Jason, Luke, Luke says that all the prisoners are either dead or gone and there's no sign of Cleophis. Now Clary, Luke, and Jace are trying to figure out what their next move is when Clary gets a FaceTime from Simon. We all know that we ended last episode with Valentine taking Simon away. Valentine has Simon tied up and says that he needs her to come to the Institute to activate the sword and if she doesn't come within the hour, her poor vampire boyfriend will die a death that he doesn't wish on anyone. Now that, that right there is a good threat. Luke tries to tell Clary she can't go and Clary says, you know what, it's fine. Valentine needs a lightning source anyways to activate the sword, so he can't really do anything right now. Yeah, that is until Luke tells her that every institute is powered by an angelic cord, which means he has lightning. In order to protect Clary, Luke wants her to take her to Magnus and Jay says that he can go in the meantime and save Simon. We all know Clary doesn't want to do with this plan. She wants to go save everybody. As they're making their plans, they then hear a voice and realize that Dot is still alive in a cage and sh she says that there's another way to destroy the sword. Hmm. You gotta wonder why she is the only one around. Can they really trust her? Now, it looks like I wasn't the only one thinking that. You probably were too. So the trio take Dot to Magnus, where he starts to heal her because obviously she's Valentine's been giving her those gross injections. She reveals that since Jace has demon blood, if he touches the sword, his grip will destroy the sword. Now, Luke says, you know, like, what everybody's thinking, why should we trust you? This is probably a trap. No one seems to want to trust Dot. But she explains that she is trustworthy. It was only because of the injections Valentine was giving her that she misled them before, but that she is indeed telling the truth now. Jace then brings up the claw hand that he saw in his vision with Clary destroying the sword. And Magnus is like, wait, I want to see this vision that you saw. So he goes and he touches both Clary and Jace and he sees the same vision that they saw. And he notices that there's a star in the sky. And he says that angels communicate through metaphor since they're such a higher being. So the star must mean Morgenstern, which is Morning Star and is the one who's going to destroy this sword, the demon Morgenstern. Jace then says, you know what, this must be why Valentine wanted me under his control so I couldn't mess up his plan. So then he kind of vows to bring the sword back. From here we go off and we see Izzy and Raphael cuddling on the couch, being all cute, and Raphael once again confesses that he has feelings for Izzy, who says, oh, you know what, this must be the Shadowhunter blood talking. And he assures her that it isn't, and that he hasn't felt this way about anyone a long time. Then, this is where things turn awkward. Izzy goes in to kiss him, and Raphael avoids it and goes to kind of feed off her wrist. And then Izzy's like, no, pulls back her wrist and is like, hey, kiss me. And he says, no, no, it's not like that. Then he confesses he's not interested in sex, and Izzy asks him if being a vampire made him this way. And he says, no, he's always been like that. Thankfully, at this point in time, Izzy's phone goes off to break up the awkwardness, so Raphael goes to to silence the phone and he sees all the messages from Alec about being entrapped in the Institute and the Institute being under attack. He then lies to Izzy and tells her he has to go to a meeting so he hides her phone up on a top shelf while she falls asleep. Next, Jace and Alec are on the phone with each other catching each other up on what's happening around them because obviously a lot of drama's going on. Jace tells Alec that he needs him to go to the power core and shut it down. As Alec is on the phone, one of um, Valentine's minions comes up to attack him from behind and then someone actually saves Alec. It in fact is Alder Tree, which is pretty crazy, right? Since they don't have the best of relationships on this show. 
So maybe we have to start reevaluating what we think of Alder Tree. Valentine has Simon locked up in Alder Tree's office, and Simon is trying to act kind of big and tough and tells Valentine that Clary needs a real father. She always wished that she would be able to know her real dad, but instead she got this homicidal maniac, and now she wants nothing to do with him. And then Simon says, you know, hey, does this bother you? Does this make you want to change? Does Simon know that he's talking to Valentine? Yeah. Clary is off with Magnus, who says that, you know, he's kind of going through a struggle, saying he feels powerless, when Simon and Valentine once again FaceTime them. Valentine says he's losing his patience with Clary. So what does he do? Yeah. He goes and slits Simon's throat, and it is pretty gross looking. Simon, you should have just kept that big mouth shut. Valentine then says Simon has around a half an hour to 45 minutes maybe before he turns to dust and that he needs blood. So of course, this pushes Clary over the edge and she demands that they go to the Institute. Side note, I gotta say, them special effects on his neck look pretty damn cool. Now, Alder Tree and Alec have kind of teamed up in order to get the power cord turned off. I don't really know if they have any other choices but to team up. Alec is, of course, still not Alder Tree's biggest fan, so there's some awkward tension between them this whole time. Alder Tree tries to assure Alec, you know what, I'm not as bad as you think I am. And, you know, Alec still blames him for this whole Izzy Yen Fen thing. And Alder Tree says, you know what, I warned her. I said that this is highly addictive. And then Alec, of course, retorts by saying, don't try to pretend that you're one of the good guys. And what, if you've learned anything from the show, it's that once Alec kind of gets an opinion of you, he's pretty stubborn and he really does not want to change it unless you totally prove him wrong. Now, Jace and Luke are now in the car on their way to the Institute, and Jace is kind of freaking out, saying, you know, he really needs to get Alec to save Alec, when suddenly someone jumps in front of their car. Who is it? Turns out to be Maya, and Luke is pretty surprised because he has no idea how she got out. But of course, Maya's still very, very pissed off at Luke for locking her in that storage room and for basically choosing Clary over everyone else. So Maya goes after Luke, slams him against the car, and then Jace threatens with his sword. She then starts to kind of wolf out, obviously, and then Luke tases her just in time, and they throw her in the car reluctantly because Jace doesn't really want to bring her along. Izzy, on the other hand, has now woken up and is starting to kind of trip out from her withdrawals and she's kind of roaming around the apartment trying to see if she can find anything that Raphael may have left behind, any kind of venom stuff. And then she hears her phone buzzing. It's kind of weird because she kind of immediately knows where the phone is up on the shelf, which is a horrible hiding job on Raphael's part. But she sees all the messages from Alec and runs off. Going back to Magnus and Clary, who have now portaled their way back to the Institute, Clary reassures Magnus that they can do this together and she's not gonna go near the sword. So they're kind of on this mission and they're going to go find Simon and Alec and everything's just gonna be okay. Then, of course, someone else shows up to ruin this entire plan and that is Raphael who shows up with his men and they grab Magnus. Now Clary tries to tell Raphael, hey, you know, don't hurt me, I'm not gonna touch the sword. And of course, he, as everybody else, all the downworlders, they need to kill her. That's their mission. So he leans in to try to bite Clary to kill her and just in the next time, Jace saves the day again. And Raphael explains that basically all the downworlders are now out to get Clary when Jace tells them the news that he has a solution. He can destroy the sword, he just needs them to believe him. Everybody's kind of iffy on this whole subject. Jace hasn't really been the most trustworthy either. Well, Maya speaks up saying, you know, why should we trust you? Why on earth would a shadow hunter give up his life for the downworld? Now, Jace basically says he doesn't want anyone to hurt Clary. Everything here is about Clary. Then he kind of convinces Raphael and Maya to go with his plan and to spread the word and put an out order out not to uh, hurt Clary. Meanwhile, Autotree and Alec are now trying to hack this computer system to get into the power core. Seems like none of Alder Tree's codes are working, and Alec being sassy like he is, you know, is like, why don't you just pull out your key? Well, Alder Tree says he has one, but it's in his office where Womp Womp Valentine is. So as Alder Tree keeps trying his various codes to bypass the system, we're finally let into his world a little bit. We learn a little bit more about this mysterious man. As you know, Alder Tree's kind of always been really hard and disapproving of, you know, Magnus and Alec as well as Simon and Clary, and there is now reason for this. He explains to Alec that when he was growing up, kind of on his way through the ranks, he fell in love with a downworlder, a werewolf named Ava. And they were together for a year when he got called away for a summit. And when he returned, he saw the aftermath of a massacre. And he found Ava hiding in the basement and she was driven mad by grief. She was never the same and could not control herself. So she would 
So she then wolfed out at him and tried to kill him. So he had no choice but to use his blade to kill her and she died in his arms. He then shows Alec the claw marks on his chest. And so he realized in that moment that a shadow hunter could never be with a downworlder, no matter how strong the feelings might be. So this explains why he is pretty harsh on those downworlder shadow hunter relationships. Well, here's hoping that Magnus and Alec can maybe turn his thinking around. After this touching moment, we go back to Clary who enters the Institute and demands to see Simon. Maya is outside with Luke, still very pissed off at Luke for choosing Clary over his own kind. And he says, you know what? This plan is gonna work as long as we all stay together. And then all of a sudden the rest of the pack and Meliorn and the Seelys show up basically saying, yeah, Dude, this better work out or we're never gonna forgive you. Yeah, there's a lot riding on this, Luke. Be careful, buddy. Back inside the Institute, Valentine is taking Clary to Simon. Now, Simon is very much in bad shape. He needs to feed, so she cuts her arm and tries to get Simon to feed, but he's pretty weak, so it takes him a while before he latches onto her arm. When Simon start, finally starts feeding, it starts off nice, and then all of a sudden he gets into his bloodthirsty mode, and that's when Valentine starts to freak out, saying, Wait, he is drinking too much, so they pull Simon off Clary. And then as that happens, it's revealed that uh, it's actually Jace disguised as Clary. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky! So where, in fact, is Clary this whole time? Well, she's sneaking around the Institute with Magnus trying to find the sword. They end up seeing Madsy, so Clary tells Magnus to go off and get her safe. Going back to Alder Tree's office, Valentine is now really, really mad that Jace has deceived him like this, so he's yelling at Jace when Simon uses his vamp speed to knock Valentine out. Looks like the blood has rejuvenated Simon. Woke him up, giving some life to him. Simon and Jace escape the office while Clary is captured by Valentine's men. Meanwhile, Alder Tree and Alec are once again struggling with these damn power core codes, and that's when Valentine's minions show up. It's four against two, and then all of a sudden, someone else comes out of the woodwork to save the day and kick the guy's butts. Who is it? Turns out to be Izzy, showing off some badass moves. And it's surprising that she was able to keep her strength up to do this because immediately after the fight, she faints. We're guessing from her withdrawals and she apologizes to Alec for everything. And also there seems to be some kind of silent apology between Alder Tree and Izzy, which is nice. Now that Simon and Jace have escaped, they are now on the hunt together for the sword. And there's a nice moment when Simon tells Jace, you know, I'm sorry for being so bloodthirsty. I could have killed you. And Jace surprisingly says that he actually would have let Simon kill him. So Simon has to say, you know, thanks for saving my life. Then they walk up to the room where the sword is attached to the power core. But before they go in, they, they stay in the shadows and they see that Valentine is dragging Clary and trying to force her to touch the sword. She of course says, I won't do it. But Valentine tells her she doesn't really get to choose. And then he goes and rambles off the stuff he's been saying this whole time, like he's doing this for her and his children and how the world would be better and safer without these downworlders, blah, blah, blah. Just as he almost has Clary's hand on the sword, Simon uses his vamp speed one more time to bust up the whole party. Now before this actually all went down, Jace managed to send Luke a message and Luke and the troops are all outside. They get the message, but then they are ambushed by some of Valentine's men, one of whom stabs Meliorn. Back inside the Institute, Jace goes to grab the sword and pulls it out of the power core, kind of reminiscent of the whole you know, sword in the stone type thing, King Arthur. But unfortunately, the sword does not destroy itself. It does not disintegrate. Instead, it kind of burns or shocks Jace's hand and he drops it. You know what we learn? Jace has in fact actually activated the sword. That throws a wrench in everybody's plans, doesn't it? As Jace drops the sword, a bunch of downworlders rush in to kind of help and then Valentine grabs the sword and uses it. And then unfortunately, all the downworlders in that room are wiped clean, wiped dead. The only ones left in the room alive are Valentine, Jace, Clary, and surprising to everybody, Simon, who has no idea why he's alive. When Jace wakes up confused, all he sees is the dead bodies on the floor. Valentine's nowhere to be seen, and he's confused about how he activated the sword, so Clary states the obvious. You must not have demon blood in you after all. You must have angel blood in you. 
That's when Alec rushes in and sees what happened and immediately starts yelling at Clary, saying, you did this because he sees Downward was dead, obviously assumes Magnus must be dead. Jace then says, you know what? No, that was me who activated the sword. And then Alec, looking a little shocked, demands to know where Magnus is and runs off to go find him. Outside, Maya, Luke, and the gang have all seen this happen with the flash of light from the soul sword. Maya, being skeptical as she should be at this point in time, is convinced the whole plan was a con and that Jace led them into a trap. Luke, doing his best to defend his friends again, once again says, no, this has to be Valentine, but Maya, she's basically ready to take Jace down and anybody that gets in her way. Luke manages to bring her back around and tells her to go with the pack back to the Jade Wolf, stay safe, and we also see Meliorn in this uh, scene, so it looks like he managed to survive that stabbing. Valentine has now escaped the Institute and is outside with the Soul Sword when he's attacked by Luke in wolf form. Valentine then stabs Luke, who turns back into his human form, and as Valentine is ready to kind of get his joy from killing Luke, Jay steps in demanding to know the truth from Valentine. Long story short, Valentine knew he could manipulate Jace. He's been playing him this whole entire time because Jace is the kind of guy who wants to be the hero. He plays the hero. He tries to save people. So when he, when Valentine was coming up with this latest plan, he made sure that Dot stayed alive and overheard the plans in order to relay it back to Jace. Then we learn that Jace, of course, was injected by angel blood, not demon blood. And then Valentine drops the bomb saying, you know what? Guess what, kid? I'm not your father. Jocelyn's not your mother. And you know Clary, the girl you're in love with? Yeah, she's not actually your sister after all. At this point, if I was Jace, my head would be exploding. And Jace, you know, is saying, no, these gotta be all lies. But Valentine assures him, hell, guess what? They're not. I'm holding the soul sword, aka the truth sword. That means these are all truths. Now they get back into a fight. Valentine drops the soul sword. In the background, Clary comes and picks up the soul sword, and that's when she gets a vision of a new rune. She draws it on the sword, saying, you know what, this better work. She has no idea what this rune does. We have no idea either, but it seems to kind of light up the sword and reveals an inscription on the sword, and then she ends up dropping the sword. Now, just as Jace is about to stab and kill Valentine, Clary intervenes, saying, you can't kill him because we still need the mortal cup. We have no idea where it is, and Valentine is the only one who knows where it is. They then turn around and see that the um, soul sword is gone. Uh-oh. Going back to Alec, he's outside the Institute kind of freaking out looking for Magnus when Magnus shows up from behind and they hug. And Magnus explains, I got Matt and Z off to a safe place. And Alec reveals, he's been on a lot of battles before, but he's never felt this type of fear before, not knowing if Magnus was okay. And this is when we get the sweet moment of the two exchanging their I love yous for the first time. I love you. I love you too. So now that Valentine is captured, what's left to talk about in this episode? Well, why did Simon survive? Well, now that he's drank Jace's angel blood, turns out he is now a daylighter, which means he can go out in the sun, and he is very, very excited about this, so he shares this with Clary, of course. But being a daylighter will definitely have its setbacks, which we'll explore, I'm sure, in the next 10 episodes. But now, at least he can go out and spend a day date with Clary. And as he's celebrating outside, telling Clary about his newfound ability and kissing her, Chase is on the steps, looking like he was going to come out to tell Clary about what Valentine told him. Instead, he ends up walking back in. So we're guessing he's not gonna tell Clary the truth, even though he told Alec a little bit earlier in the episode that that's what he wanted to do. So now only Valentine, Alec, and Jace know the truth about Jace. Oh, and Izzy's still kind of twitching from her withdrawals, but she does something good and tells Raphael she doesn't want anything from him ever again. Looks like she's trying to start cleaning up her act. Then this whole Episode ends with a cliffhanger, as it should, because it is a mid-season finale cliffhanger. We see a mysterious figure walking away with the soul sword. Thing is, we can't tell who it is. Ah, right? So we leave this half of the season wondering who has that soul sword. Could it possibly be Sebastian? We know that we're going to meet him in the summer season, but wouldn't he not be able to touch the sword since he's the one with demon blood, correct? Or maybe that rune that Clary drew on the sword allowed him to, or what does that rune do to the sword? And if it's someone else who took the sword, who could it be? Also, where the hell's Cleophis? Where's the mortal cup? How long will it take Jace to tell Clary the truth? Now, after this episode aired, the showrunners did a bunch of interviews, and they said that this love triangle was definitely going to get juicier in the next set of episodes, because 
Clary and Simon are getting closer. Jace is kind of letting them have their relationship. He's kind of backed off, but you know he can't help his feelings. And so, and these two relationships are pretty opposite from each other. You know, Jace and Clary are kind of steamy and very sexy and passionate, whereas Simon and Clary have this kind of cute little school romance. But I guess we'll have to see how that whole love triangle plays out. And we'll have to wait for all that until June 5th to get our answers because mark that down on the calendars, June 5th is when Shadowhunters is coming back for the rest of season two. Now I wanna hear from you in the comments or on my socials. What were your thoughts on the biggest reveals of this episode? Which one maybe shocked you the most? If you read the books, obviously you probably know some of these things that were gonna happen, but how do you think they're gonna play out with the TV show? Also, what should I cover now that this show's on hiatus? I'm already doing The Fosters and Riverdale. Pretty Little Liars comes back soon. Maybe I'll do iZombie or something when it returns. Let me know if there's any other shows that you think that I should cover. Hopefully I've seen them so it will be easier. Otherwise, if I've missed 10 seasons, it's not really gonna happen anytime soon. Hit the combo going down below, then be sure to click over here for even more episodes of What Happened or my most recent interview with Zoe Deutsch, who's hilarious and stars in Before I Fall, which is in theaters now, which you should go see. It's a good movie. As always, I'm Lisa. Thanks for watching. See you soon.